Hi, my name is Rachel Langley. I'm a family medicine doctor here at Pine Ridge Family Medicine. I wanted to take this minute to talk to you about what pap smears are. There's a lot of confusion about pap smears versus pelvic exams. A lot of women just say pap smears when they really mean a pelvic exam. So for example, if you go to the ER for a problem down there, they're probably gonna do a pelvic exam, which is just when they examine um, the vagina, the outer area, um, to make sure that there's not any problems going on, but they're not going to do a pap smear. A pap smear is generally something that you have done at a gynecologist or a family medicine doctor, and that's where they collect a couple cells, and they send it in a container like this to be looked at by a pathologist for signs of cervical cancer. So that's what we're talking about today. So here at Pine Ridge, we have a cool setup in that these drawers are heated. I think that's the coolest thing. I've never seen it before. Um, and so we have these. These are called speculums. This is what we do not to do any cutting or any kind of painful thing, just for spreading the tissue of the vagina so that you can get to the tissue that you need to check for cancer. So there's a wide variety of sizes that we have here, depending on who and what age we're doing a pelvic exam on. And they open just a little bit, just enough to get uh, a view of the cervix. The end of the vagina is called the cervix. It's kind of the door between uh, the vagina and the uterus up here. And that's so that we can get a good view of that cervix because that's what we're checking for cancer. So we use a little bit of lubricating jelly to make sure that things are as comfortable as possible. But it's an uncomfortable exam because you're hanging out there, you feel very exposed. Um, but hopefully your doctor talks you through it or and uh, is able to make you feel more comfortable, more at ease. Um, the most painful part of uh, patients' experiences with pelvic exams is generally from them tensing up their own muscles, whether they know it or not. If you tense those muscles um, that, are that are at the entrance to the vagina, that's what can make it a painful experience. So the more you can take deep breaths, talk with your doctor, tell him or her about your worries or your what's uncomfortable for you, um, the more comfortable it can be. And it really shouldn't be a painful exam. Um, so then the actual pap smear, uh, is just like you can touch any cells on your body and collect some cells, touch any skin on your body and collect some cells from there, like I just dusted cells all over the place. That's what we're doing on a pap smear, is we're collecting those little bits of cells. So generally the first thing I do on a pap smear is I wipe away some of the normal mucus that you're supposed to have on your cervix. I use a giant Q-tip. All you feel is a touch. And then I collect those cells. This is called a spatula. It's also kind of like a spoon. I don't know if you can get a good view of it. But uh, that's the first thing I do just around the tissue, um, around the outside of the cervix. And then I collect from the inside of the cervix. I use one of these. It kind of looks like a bottle brush. It goes inside the cervix just a little bit. And sometimes that feels a little bit pinchy or crampy. But then it's gone in just a second. Sometimes it causes a little... Uh, bit of bleeding. So sometimes doctors will give you a pad afterwards and that's why it just causes a little bit of trauma to your cervix to get collect those cells. Then we put both of those into one of these containers. It has some liquid in here and that's where the cells float around. We work really hard to get all those cells off because every once in a while if we don't get enough cells the pathologist sends it back and says it's not a good pap smear you got to do it again and no one likes that. The doctors don't like doing it either. So then this gets shipped off to a pathologist, someone who's an expert at looking at things under the microscope and telling what kind of cells they are. And they're able to tell all the way from completely normal cervical cells on one side all the way to cancer. We have a big spectrum that we can tell these days. So they get funny names sometimes that confuse patients. They get told they had ASCUS, which stands for uh, atypical squ squamous cells of unknown significance. There's a lot of, of lingo in there. But generally, if you have ASCUS, for example, or CIN1, CIN2, these are still really low, very normal cells on the spectrum of cancer to normal, completely normal. So just so you know, that's how far we've evolved with pap smears, is that we can really project um, whether these look funny at all, if there's even an inkling of any sign of cancer. And that's what we let you know of, and then we'll increase what kind of exams we do, depending on what your results are. Um, also, with the advent of being able to check for HPV or human papilloma virus, that's enabled us to really project if there's any sign of cancer and if you're likely to get cancer. So after you turn 30, if you've had a history of normal pap smears, you might be able to go every five years with us confidently saying, you are not going to get cancer in the next five years based on all the things that we can look at right now. 
because HPV, if you may have heard before, tends to increase your chance of developing cervical cancer. So if we already know that your cells in your 30s have that HPV virus, that puts you at an increased chance of cancer, so we'll be watching you more often, doing more frequent pap smears. In your 20s, it's fairly common to have HPV, but your body gets rid of it. We don't really know why, but it does. So uh, that's why we don't check for HPV in your 20s, um, because we just know that it might be there and it might go away on its own. So we don't, we don't really want to know if it's there, because if it goes away on its own, then there's no trouble at all. Um, so that's how we are able to project uh, when you should have your next pap smear. There's a big old guidebook that we go through every single time based on your age and your history and what kind of cells we found on your pap smear to be able to tell when you should get your next one. So be sure to talk with your doctor about what the results are and what that means. Um, I'd love to talk with you about the HPV vaccine more next time. Thanks for listening in.